so no matter where you get your your birds from uh, or where you get your eggs from one of the things you need to uh, co be concerned about is um, salmonella enteritidis uh, se we call it um, so it's an oddball bacterium that uh, can live uh, in the gut of chickens um, who are perfectly fine and are not affected by it. Um, and unfortunately, it can also penetrate the tissues of the hen. So it's not just living in the tube we call the gut, um, which isn't, which is actually kind of separate from all of the other parts of the hen, but it actually can penetrate all the other tissues of the hen. And what that means is that that bacteria can get inside eggs while they're still in the bird. And then it's inside eggs that you eat sometimes, rarely, but it does happen. Here in the United States, we've had programs to try to control it um, <clears throat> for many, many years. My lab, one of the things our lab does is it does the uh, Food and Drug Association mandates Salmonella SE testing for farms that are selling their eggs, farms above a certain size, above like 3000 hens in one place uh, are required by law to uh, test their hens uh, environment periodically for SE. Um, so it's a big deal because uh, it can make people very ill or it can cause death. Um, so among the many things we have to worry about these days, we should at least think about uh, salmonella. Um, so what do you do? Um, well, like this is what I did with the birds that I have is um, of course I run a lab, right? So when they arrived um, as chicks, um, we tested them immediately. Um, oh. And so, so what we do is we test the, what they call the meconium paper. So that's just the uh, bedding that the bird is shipped on. And the very first uh, fecal material that the bird produces oh. as a chick is called the meconium. We test that for salmonella SE. Um, and, uh, and then we maintain the birds in such a way that we are pretty sure they're not exposed to it again and, uh, and periodically test them. So it's about 20, get... go ahead. How do they get exposed to it? How, so I got, I got a chicken with no salmonella in it. And how does that chicken become a salmonella chicken? Yeah, well, um, many studies over the years have shown that rodents are the, uh, uh, that can carry this. And so it, it's yet another reason to really be careful about hygiene um, where you raise your birds and, and good hygiene uh, in regards to their food. Um, so okay. keeping their food in a, uh, sealed um, like a metal garbage can is a great way so to we're, store. We're, uh, we're, gonna talk, yeah. we're gonna talk about disease. So let's let's save okay. that for the, yeah, okay, that's, okay. My, that's my fault for taking you. Uh, that's no, my, that's okay. My curiosity. I, I, yeah, <laughs> I felt like I needed to mention that one early yeah. on. So you oh. can get SE tested birds. Um, you can buy, uh, you know, sorry, in the United States, and I'm sorry, I'm just gonna keep on this one. You can oh. cut and insert that's it fine. elsewhere if you oh, want. But in the United States, uh, there's a national poultry Im improvement plan called NPIP is the acronym. And uh, via that plan, uh, places that uh, commercially uh, produce birds, uh, hatcheries and, and this and that can voluntarily go through certain testing that um, certifies that, you know, you can expect that these birds are gonna be free of certain diseases. One of them is another kind of salmonella called salmonella florum. Um, another one is avian influenza. Another one is mycoplasma, and uh, and there's SE. So okay. I just wanted to mention that. Okay, you know that's all. I had salmonella once when I was twenty, and uh, I thought I was mm. I thought I was dying. Not a pleasant thing. <laughs> it was awful, no. all yeah. the way through, all the way through. Not good. No. Um, no. All right. So uh, so speaking of, uh, I guess in a sense, uh, that topic. Uh, how often do you need new chickens, and what do you do with the old ones for the home gardener? Right. I mean, I guess the a factory would just send them to a dog food factory or something. I don't know what they do, but no. what does a home gardener do with? You got a chicken, and it's, now it's producing uh, an egg every two days. Now it's producing an egg every three days, and so on and so forth. What how, what do you what do you what does one do? Assuming we sure. can't have an infinite number of pet chickens. <laughs> Absolutely. So um, <clears throat> depends on your locale uh, and obviously on your, your outlook on these things. Um, chickens can live to be uh, at least teenagers. So yeah, so then their productivity declines a lot um, way before that. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, if you're interested in having a productive flock, then after, you know, maybe as short as two or three years, 
you may want to bring in a new flock. I see. Um, so there's lots of different ways to deal with that. Um, in the time-honored tradition, uh, my mom grew up in Kansas and, uh, and uh, they had a flock of chickens and every Sunday, one of them would disappear. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and they'd have chicken for dinner. Um, so, uh, so certainly there are many breeds of chickens that, that are just fine to use as uh, meat uh, producing birds and they're good layers. There's oh. lots of those breeds out there. Um, okay. So if you choose to do that, then you just acquaint yourself with methodology um, or you can bring them to, if there's someone in your region that has an abattoir or um, or a service that will um, butcher animals for you, uh, then you can choose to do that. Um, in the United States, they also, um, the big commercial places will send their birds to, um, they call a live bird market or some other way of um, basically en masse, you know, disposing of a lot of birds that way. Um, those are not your best, um, quality birds for meat production. Uh, there are many breeds that are for meat production, but at any rate, that's one way of doing it. Um, some people just, honestly, they, they keep them. They just <laughs> and they, them. yeah, they keep them. And then they bring new birds in. So as, you know, I can talk more later about best practices um, with doing, whether if you choose to do something like that, there's, there are risks involved because the very best practice is have a flock, get what you need out of that flock, then dispose of that flock. However you choose to do it, give them to your aunt Tess or, you know, <laughs> I don't know, adopt them out yes. as pets or make them into another form of food, whatever is the right thing for you and your uh, outlook uh, around animals. But anyway, empty the place of chickens uh -huh. and then do a really thorough uh, cleaning and disinfecting. Think about the management. What what did you hate about this coop? What do you want in a new coop? You know, uh, rethink your whole deal. Full reset Clean, sort of thing. A whole reset. But it's really important because some chicken pathogens like parasites and um, you know germs of different kinds, viruses and, and bacteria, etc., they can persist in the environment in which those chickens have been housed, including the feather dander. There's Merrick's disease, which can be passed along over the years and over large distances by feather dander. It's not a good thing. Um, at any rate, you can clean and disinfect and then wait for at least a couple of weeks, leave the place empty for at least a couple of weeks because time mm -hmm. and sunlight uh, also do their job to disinfect and then bring in your new flock. Oh, that's really, that's really good advice. I, mean, I thought of like just having them coming and going and in and out. You got some old ones making big eggs, little ones making small eggs. That I makes know. A lot of, that makes a lot of sense though. Just, just Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not saying that people don't do it that way. They do do sequential flocks or uh, in, um, we did a survey a few years ago and I think about a third of the people uh, that we queried um, do that. It's just a bad practice uh, over time, uh, if you're really interested in keeping birds healthy. Yeah, and I can see it. I know in terms of risk, you're just lowering the risk of, of all those things happening. Yeah. It makes perfect sense.